Hey, welcome to Calgary Basement Sessions. I'm Ben Price. I'm Ben Montgomery. And today we're talking to Natural 20. Natural 20 is a sultry groove band based in Calgary, Alberta. Their music weaves together rumbling bass, dance beats, melodic brass, and lush vocals with virtuosic playing. It moves between the subdued and seemingly chaotic, cultivating an organic sound that inspires foot tapping and dancing. Embedded in all of this is lyrical candor resonating with introspection and melancholy, creating a full listening experience. The music, a distant palette of colors, draws influences from such contemporary acts like Bad Bad Not Good, Hiatus Coyote, The Internet, as well as decades of classical rock, blues, hip-hop, and jazz. That's right. Thanks for having us, Ben and Ben. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being on. Streams of sweat dripping off our faces, big goals. They now stand a thing. Am I going back to what it was? We learned to hate and love the world and not ourselves. We've heard it all, we've heard this all before.
think. Awesome, guys. Yeah, that sounded fantastic. That sounded great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we we love a we love a good trumpet and horn section here, you know. So we're 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 massive fans yeah. of you guys. <laughs> Oh, is that right? Oh, dude, that wow. means a lot to us. <laughs> Thanks. Definitely. To, I mean, to, we are playing a stripped-down version, but gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's still These bad. are hard times. Hard times call for stripped-down versions. <laughs> Absolutely. How are you guys faring right now with all of this? We're pretty good. We've got a lot of we've got a lot going on. We're lucky. We have a house somewhat like yours, just with less people. So we're all we're all creatives in here, and we have we have a lot of content being produced. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's amazing to hear. You guys are doing some really great work. I saw the first one that you guys released. Wow. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank so, you. Yeah. They're, they're, they're slowly getting better and better, you know, because we're getting, you know, we're uh, myself anyway, I'm getting more confident doing these, you know, so they're getting slowly better and better. Absolutely. You're getting your legs. Yeah. yeah. Well, a shout out about the horns. Typically, we have quite a few more. Yeah. But actually, when they, we say we're stripped down, I mean, we're... We're grasping at straws here. <laughs> <laughs> a saxophonist as well. Yeah. Um, okay. He's, he's, yeah. he's excellent. Yeah. He typically plays tenor sax. And we have a trombonist as yeah. well named Dylan. And uh, he just adds so much to the plate. He brings a pedal board that he hooks up his uh, trombone to sometimes. And it just sounds super, so super cool. Interesting. And uh, in some of the tunes, when I don't have to obviously pull double duties with the keyboard, I've been uh, playing some sax too. So we have... Uh, Quite the trio of horns. So we've got a strong horn line for sure. Nice. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Where did you find all these guys? Where did you find all these trumpet, like trumpet players and uh, saxophone players? Dylan and I actually, uh, we were in marching band uh, for <laughs> many years, like way back. And we would carpool, um, and that was a that was a good time. And then uh, yeah. lo and behold, I guess he he ran into. Uh, one of our, our mutual friends, and we were saying, hey, you know, we, we'd love to have a, a trombone come jam, and he did, and then it's just been smooth sailing ever since. Fantastic. That's great. That's really, really cool. You, ever, you, ever, you, you guys thought about, like, sort of, um, like, uh, marketing yourselves as, like, a sort of session, sort of uh, horn section as well? Yeah, so Dylan and I, uh, we've done some pretty cool opportunities. Uh, we got... We got invited to play with the Bar Brothers at Folk Fest. Nice. Um, they were just looking for horns, and we went up there and we did it. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, yeah, originally they, the dudes, they started inviting us to play with them. So they do very few good. shows good. over the year. But we do have like you know, a portion of those with them. Yeah. We'll play. I mean, they'll play like a two-hour-long set, and we'll play a couple with them. That's always fun. Wow. That's awesome. Wow, that's very, very that's that's impressive for mm -hmm. sure. That's impressive. Yeah, we got definitely got some heavy hitters in this band, so really do, I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty appreciative yeah. and grateful to have these guys. Yeah, yeah, a bit, yeah. And Sibby, the saxophonist, we know him through the music scene. He's a prolific uh, musician that gets out in the town and goes to the the jams and the open mics and the shows. All and the jazz. We connected yeah. kind of through the music scene that way. Awesome, that's fantastic. That's really cool. Yeah, so you like your your sister band, um, I am the mountain. So tell us about what what band came first? Did I uh, Natural Twenty come first, or did I am the mountain come first? Yeah, so Natural Twenty um, formed between Rob, Jason, and I. Jason is the guitarist, and we've been playing music for more than a decade now, uh, through different outfits and um, genres. So. Uh, Natural 20 formed in 2016 off the sort of death of our previous band, Jet Frazen. We were playing more like, um, what would you say we were playing? Like more heavy, like math rock, oh, nice. heavy, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. Kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very weird stuff. Um, yeah, it was, fun. it was really fun. But yeah, we went to Natural 20, uh, we started introducing more jazz through a lot of the players. We still had the bassist, we still had Keith from a previous band. Mm -hmm. Um, and since 2016, we've been experimenting with lineups. We used to have uh, two female vocalists, um, and we've been rotating horns and, and whatnot. So we're still adding more. We're still modifying, but that's how it came to be, 2016. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. So, so tell us about... So long tell us story about... short. <laughs> <laughs> A very long story short. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, so tell us about that song that you just played. Like, uh, what's what's the name of that song? That tune is called Anticipation. Anticipation, awesome. Yeah, a lot of the lyrics and and even the feeling of the song is just about you know waiting, being patient, and just really feeling anxious for something, mm-hmm. anticipating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So have you, have you guys got like a, a are you guys recording an EP or are you recording an album like after after all this is done? Initially, we were planning to record a full length album during the summer. Uh, that's pre COVID, mm-hmm. um, but now we've sort of adjusted our expectations. Our plan is to release an EP, a four or five song EP by the end of this year. So that's what, what we're geared towards right now. Yeah, yeah. And you, you already have a, a demo track out. It's uh, Digging digging Our Own. Tell us about that. Like, where, where did you where did you record that? Um, did you record it in Calgary or, or, or elsewhere? Yeah, that, that so the Digging Our Own demo on YouTube, on our, our YouTube page, mm. we recorded that at the Beach Studios uh, through their ARPA class. So they had a bunch of students uh, they needed some subjects to record. Um, we were chosen, and they did a fantastic job with that demo. That demo sounds so shiny. I love it. It does, yeah. It sounds, um, very, very, and, it sounds very professionally recorded, for sure. Ex- yeah, exactly. They did a, a bang-up job. And um, the, the single that we released, Bakari, of last year, that was definitely all done in-house. Mm. So um, maybe not up to par with the beach studio recording but we are definitely experimenting and just trying to find our own sound with the recording too yeah, yeah. so that's sort of where it's at there's that yeah mm-hmm. tell, tell us about the uh Bukhari music video as well because we, we watched it um we watched it this morning and yesterday as well tell us about that tell us about um like the, the process of that yeah so with Bukhari that was a song that we came up with um 2018 and uh, yeah, it was just the first target of our how we wanted to record. So that was a subject of our song. We connected with a Matt Royal student, uh, Kat Delay, and uh, she just needed a subject. So we've been a subject for a lot of different <laughs> things <laughs> over the years. Yeah. And um, I mean, yeah. it's not stopping. I think we're we're just still like an experimental band, but we are gearing towards releasing content. We we want to we want to tour. Um, and we want to get out there in like the you know national and international stages, so that's where we're at. <laughs> so we're, we're um so are you, are you just thinking just like to tour around uh, Canada first and then going into the states and then Europe or? Yeah, I mean that's a good question. I mean, there's no right way to do it. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Um, I went to a yeah. uh, uh, Rob and I went to a Sled Island uh, panel uh, last year. And two panels, one was about touring uh, regionally in Canada and the other being touring um, overseas. Mm -hmm. And it seems like touring like South Korea and Germany are really easy for Canadians, maybe at least (laughs) pre-COVID. So that's sort of the kind of, (laughs) right? That's the weird thing to say, (laughs) pre-COVID. (laughs) Pre-COVID. Post-COVID, oh my God. But um, (laughs) yeah, we're like, that was sort of the plan, like, maybe circumvent the US. I don't know if it's much that necessary, but we want to play at markets that would appreciate our sound. I mean, the full sound of us, all seven or eight or nine or how many, <laughs> however many there are of us, um, is very like urban, powerful. very mm-hmm. powerful, urban, modern, but you know, a lot of homages to a lot of classics. So I don't know how to describe it, but um, we definitely want to hit up like yeah, big big cities in in Asia and in Europe and the states if if it's if it if we can right yeah. Yeah. Japan but yeah Japan, I mean yeah. like yeah I, I yeah. guess it's, I guess it's kind I mean, of difficult you know, to sort of tour Canada as well because everything's so spread out you know it takes maybe like nine maybe twelve hours to get to like the next city you know so that's that's kind of quite a difficult aspect for for Canadian bands that's why I'm guessing a lot of Canadian bands that do tour go down to the states or go to Europe where everything's a lot closer together exactly and I mean we want to definitely leverage like as many grants as possible and luckily like there's grants from the I mean, at least there was I don't know <laughs> I don't know now but there is grants to let us go you know to Germany and South Korea because you know they they wanted that kind of free flow of artistry mm-hmm. between these nations so like 
that's what we were sort of gearing towards. Yeah. Um, but in terms of Canada, I mean, these guys have definitely toured Canada in a truck, yeah. you know, playing music. So yeah. they, they definitely know the experience. <laughs> And so, I mean, bef- uh, I mean, my, my initial thought was just to bring, um, to bring natural 20, you know, uh, across the nation, maybe bring like four or five of us instead of the full band, uh, hitting up major cities like Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, um, very focusing, uh, on our demographics. So, um, that was the plan, and I don't think it will change too much. It's just different expectations now going forward. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm telling you now, like you guys, you guys and I on the mountain should do a UK tour because you would both of you guys would go down a storm in the UK for sure. Wow, yeah, no, appreciate that. That'd be great. That'd be so fun. God damn. <laughs> you, should, you should just do like a like a I'm joint to, tour. I'm trying to keep sure. cool and collected here, but just thinking about that makes me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and plus it's it's so like it's uh you know like glasgow for instance glasgow and edinburgh and scotland they're only an hour away you know and they're the two major cities in, in in scotland and then obviously there's london and manchester and stuff like that but you know you're talking maybe from Gla- like from glasgow to london it's about nine hours you know that's you know from basically top to tail so it's everything's pretty congested and stuff so you could easily do a uk tour wow yeah, no, I, I, we appreciate that uh, that vote of confidence. <laughs> UK would UK tour would be amazing, and I mean, as soon as as borders are fuck, I don't know. As soon as things, you know, um, that's definitely something that we're looking towards. So, I think the EP first, EP first, yep. then tour later, right? Good idea. <laughs> Well, we yeah. certainly have a lot more time for recording than uh, we did a few months ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I was going to be gone. Yeah all summer in Ottawa because of a certain trade that I'm in. I don't know oh, so secretive. Oh. I don't Whoa. know if I'm allowed to say it. Okay, so I'm in the military. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to know that, but I was supposed to basically on course and on task for basically the, all summer, but now I'm not. So now we can actually spend more time for recording and writing, which is uh, exactly kind of a positive in light of a lot of negatives. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Well said. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, Are you in basic training for the military, or is it a, this is a, a career? My trade is actually musician. Okay. Uh, so I believe it or okay. not, I actually play the tuba for the with for the military. Oh, okay. Wow. Guard, which is like the national band of Canada. Nice. Uh, and I was one of six tuba players in all of Canada accepted uh, again this summer to go and play tuba for the national band. That's Just wicked. Like, um, and lo and behold, everything got shut down, right? So yeah. Mm-hmm. So the way it goes, you know, it's a twist in the tail of my life. So that's uh, it's all right. It's gonna work out, I think. I have a no. friend who's a singer who is the he's the main singer or was the main singer for the. Um, royal band of australia and he yeah he it was most of his career he just sang you know at different military placements all over australia and he had a really good career he lived in canada for a little while and sang in a couple of shows that i worked on but um yeah back to australia and ended his career in the in the military again mm. that's impressive mm. it's actually a great place to be mm. there's a lot of opportunities uh there's like 90 different trades for starters that you can do like if you're, mm-hmm. if you're into welding if you're into driving if you're into cooking you know if you're into just tech computers and tech mm-hmm. like something for you mm-hmm. disclaimer this is not a promo for the Canadian <laughs> yeah not a promo for the arm. <laughs> yeah. just saying i have to say it i'm obligated to say it <laughs> or the queen or the queen <laughs> when, when when the army sees this they'll be like oh get back in front lines <laughs> uh, really say get back to your practice room and play those scales <laughs> your RQ is pending <laughs> awesome um, so tell us about your New Year's Eve party gig at the Palomino tell us about that oh man oh, so much fun <laughs> yeah oh man where do you even start I, overall it was just a great night <laughs> 
we were playing upstairs, which is really cramped for us, but we made it work. Um, were, were any of you there? No, we weren't there, no. I was there. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was. Yeah, I don't know. This was, was just a fucking fun party, man. Um, we played some, some bangers, some yeah. covers. Yeah, well, a lot of we played a lot of covers. We played a Justin Timberlake cover, yeah, Senorita. Dare by the Gorillas. Oh, love <laughs> it. Featuring uh, oh, the saxophone it. section. Oh. <laughs> oh, I, mean, just had to... I love it. I love the Gorillas. The um, Gorillas was my first the first ever album I bought was a Gorillas album. Oh really? Which one? Oh, the first one. The, the first the first ever Gorillas album, yeah. I can't remember the name. Man. <laughs> And yeah, we actually do a really fun cover of Dare that that's been in our uh, set for like the past year, mm-hmm. almost a year. That's um, that one's really fun, that's and that's that's sort of a song that we were planning to record for maybe our EP. Maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, since then we, I mean, we had a whole bunch of shows get canceled, but um, yeah, that was a really memorable show at the Palomino, yeah. despite playing upstairs. Man. What were those bands? Um, I never know the name. Of the Corey Hotline band. Yeah. Thirty Six was playing. Uh It was a crazy lineup. Wow. So, so Halloween is kind wow. of a cool venue because unlike most music venues, it has an upstairs and a downstairs. Uh-huh. And the downstairs uh-huh. is like the big stage, and mm-hmm. we mostly mm-hmm. played there. Yeah. And uh, to go upstairs yeah. and still have like, a huge crowd, have people dancing having a great time it's just you know a satisfying feeling because yeah. it's it's kind of like a yeah. tough stage and we made it work really well and uh it was really cool yeah, yeah. it worked out it was, it was super fun yeah. just a great venue overall and uh mm-hmm. it was a wild night there were like 10 bands i, I don't even think we could name them all wow. if, even if we looked up the list there's just too many <laughs> that's incredible yeah i've never been to the palomino before but that's definitely on my bucket list after you know everything reopens and stuff Visit Palomino is on your bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got okay. Good. Why is it? Why? Why should it? Yeah, it why should it all be far? <laughs> <laughs> um. So. So so far sounds Calgary. You played their fiftieth anniversary gig. Now I've never even heard of uh, so far sounds before. Can can you can you explain? Uh, what it is uh yeah that so far sound show was was really fun um the inf- <laughs> yeah so so far sound is uh is a, a crowd led organization that uh does basement sessions invites artists from you know all different kinds of levels and have a very and you know they book out a very intimate space to have very intimate shows you know um, a lot of the time when you're going to bars or even big big shows, there's just so many distractions. Um, so far, was definitely wanted to focus on the musicianship and, and the set that the songwriters and bands are performing. Yeah. So, we, we, yeah, we played the, the Calgary 50th uh, show, and that was an amazing time. It was at Nosh by Nourish. And uh, we, we played with Brett and Rose and... Um, one other talented uh, musician that names escape me right now. Mm-hmm. The unfortunate thing with that is that um, usually uh, the musicians get an option to get their set filmed, uh, which we did. Unfortunately, that film, that footage had corrupt audio, so unfortunately, oh, no. really? we were not oh, able to release. Oh, no. Yeah, we were not able to release a song. Um, so yeah, we're still in the talks with so far, uh, but as you can imagine, mm-hmm. what things are like now. So. Hopefully, uh, when things pick up, we could play another show and yeah. sort of kick it off again. Yeah. 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 So far, shows are pretty cool. I mean, typically, like Fred said, they're usually in an intimate environment, usually like in a house, usually in a basement. So playing it at um, Nosh was actually kind of different than usual, which is like a nice kind of hippie cafe, which is awesome. And uh, at so far shows, the vibe is basically like everyone's sitting on the ground, like cross-legged, like sipping on tea. Wearing like, you know, fuzzy animal hats. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah, no, they're they're pretty nice. It's a really good environment because people sit and listen. Yeah. And the problem in Calgary is, you know, you go to see a band. You know, people are drinking and eating and talking and hanging out. 
But at a show like that, that's where you sit and listen, and that's the point of the night, which mm-hmm. is kind of nice. It's nice it's to nice. have something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the kind of idea that, that that we had, except without the audience, you know, and and because we have got a big basement and stuff, you know. So the idea was to do like a sort of live session, but obviously now due to COVID, it's not possible. So once this is all done, we'll for sure have you guys in our basement, not in a creepy way. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so before we go, guys, um, can you tell people where they can find you on social media? Yeah, you can find us on Instagram, uh, Natural Twenty Music, all written out. Uh, we're also on Twitter, Natural Twenty Music, um, and Facebook, Natural Twenty Music. <laughs> um, yeah, we're all there. Uh, put music behind it because you might not be able to find it. Um, and yeah, we look forward to talking to you. Um, Instagram or Facebook anytime. Amazing, amazing, nice. fantastic. Um, so, are you gonna are you gonna play us a song to, to to finish the podcast? Absolutely. So, this song is called "Asleep Again." This is a song we've never performed live. Um, it's a song we've written very long ago, and uh, we're the three songwriters, I guess, for this song. So, this is a treat. This is the first time really anyone in the public is hearing this. So, enjoy, guys. <laughs> Can she might be 
Thank you for tuning in to Calgary Basement Sessions. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps us out. And please follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram at YYC Basement Sessions.